The next section is going to focus on how easy it is to take that content and design in our no-code platform. Uh, and to demonstrate some of the workflow and functionality of that platform, Luke and I are going to challenge ourselves to build an inbox in only 15 minutes live in front of you. Uh, to begin that process, we want to ask you to help us decide what we're going to build. So in the chat, if you could decide what the role we're going to build out here, A for customer support role, B for, for sales, and C for leadership. Once you choose that, we'll also ask one more uh, variable for you to, to help us design. But Matt, what are we seeing? What do they want us to build? Yeah, well, so looking at the chat, I'm seeing an overwhelming response for C, leadership. I say we go with that. Okay, we're going to build 15 minutes to build a leadership sim. Now, next question is, what do you want us to assess in our leadership sim? Uh, do we want to assess problem solving, communication, or teamwork and collaboration? One, two, and three in the chat. Let's see here. I'm taking a look. Why I think we're leaning a little bit towards two, communication. Okay, so we've got a leadership sim. Let me write this down. Leadership sim about communication, 15 minutes on the clock. Matt, you're going to time us, right? Absolutely. All right. Luke, are you ready to go? Should we, uh, should we share the platform, show them how to do this? Yeah, here's kind of where the fun is going to begin. So let me grab control of the screen here, and we will get going. And I'll say as, as Luke pulls up his screen, I believe we're going to start by creating the project uh, and adding a name to that. And in this case, we're going to call it Leadership Team. And then the first step in creating the inbox is adding that skill, that communication skill that you all so graciously decided us we would use. So Luke, uh, what are you doing here? Yeah, so not only are we entering the skill, which again, a skill is going to be kind of our basis for measurement. So we're evaluating how effective someone is in the skill of communication. And we're just going to provide a brief uh, description of that skill to our audience. So how we define communication at our company for this group of users. So in this case, you know, we, we, we grabbed an example from, uh, from Google a little bit. Uh, we're handling a lot of our client-facing communication via email. We know this is an email interface. This is perfect uh, for the day-to-day -day that we're trying to outline. And I'll pause on the screen real quick, Luke, before we move on. That blue hyperlink, see examples. On this page, if you click that, you can download a Word doc uh, full of examples of skills and descriptions that other authors have used that you can borrow directly on this page. Uh, but let's go ahead and start to build out the scenario. As I mentioned, this is an expedited process, so some of these fields we're not going to fill out in this case, but uh, we will go with the role introduction. What role are we taking on, Luke? Yeah, so in this case, we, we had the food delivery service as an example before. In this case, we're saying we're working at one of those food subscription services, uh, and we're going to be acting as the chief people officer. So we talked about uh, the leadership team playing a big role. We want to assume the role of someone who has interactions with a lot of different teams, a lot of different potential stakeholders. In this case, we report to the CEO of the company, but we deal with a lot of different people and a lot of different job functions. In our okay. Function. So we're taking on the role of chief people officer at a food subscription service, one of those uh, delivery services that brings a box of food for you, pre-prepared meals for you to, to cook up at home. Correct, Luke? Exactly. And like I said, there's a lot of other world building you can do here, but with this 15 minutes that we're working with, we can only do so much. Well, let's start to build out some characters. We're on the clock. So Luke, uh, I think you're going to build out three characters here. The first being Caleb Bauer. And Caleb's title here is Senior Manager of Operations. Uh, the next character you're going to build is a designer, I believe, Dion Dawson. Uh, yeah. And the, the fun thing with these characters, Wyatt, is we have the sample uh, characters documentation that we provide to our clients. And these are all taken directly from that. So we try to make uh, copy and paste as possible. So three characters here, senior manager of operations, designer, and VP of customer support. That's who our chief people officer will be interacting with in our simulation here. Let's go ahead and start to build out the interactions and the emails in the inbox section. The first email is coming from Caleb, that senior manager of operations. Subject line, did you see this? And Luke, go ahead and keep building as I read this out. Uh, Caleb says, I know that we regularly audit our outreach, but I was wondering if you had seen what the sales team has been saying about our packaging. Something about everything being 100% recyclable? You and I both know that's untrue. It might make the customer feel better, but it's totally unethical. I think I'm going to say something. So Caleb's reaching out with this issue about overhearing a concern from, from how the sales team is communicating. What are our response options here, Luke? 
Yeah, in this case, we're giving our users three different options. And this kind of illustrates the, the levels of correctness idea. Uh, the first option is going to be just sitting on that email until you have more information. For certain skills, this might be a, a more effective response, but since we are measuring communication, that's actually not particularly. Uh, no communication at all. Not at all. So uh, in this case, we can give you know negative or positive points. Since this is an ineffective response, we'll actually give this a negative point for our users. The second response here, uh, we will communicate with Caleb saying we're gonna look into this matter immediately. We're not defining what the actual resolution is going to be necessarily, but we're at least getting that outreach to him. Uh, that's better than nothing, I would say. So we might assign that one point. The best option though, and again, this is my opinion, I think Wyatt might agree with me, but uh, confirm with Caleb that the outreach is audited and a discussion will be held if necessary. So we're confirming we have a process in place to handle situations like this. We are getting that communication out to Caleb, kind of confirming that we're going to be looking into it, and then saying, if we need to talk about this, we will, and giving him that, that uh, clarification. Yeah, it certainly seems to be the most effective option there. And Luke's demonstrating here how you add skills and assessment points to response options. Now, when the participant goes through this, based on what they choose, those points will be applied in the background and, and put into the reporting, uh, obviously, that happens at the end of the simulation. One more thing I want to add on this uh, email, Luke. I always love an opportunity to show the personality of the character you're interaction, interacting with. Let's uh, have Caleb sign off in a specific way. We all work with colleagues uh, who are rushed and urgent, act like everything needs to happen now, now, now. Let's make Caleb one of those and put a tagline here that says, let me know what you think ASAP. Awesome. Th that's a moment of adding authenticity of your coworker and who you're dealing with that I just love about inboxes. Uh, so let's move on to the next interaction, which is going to be an instant message. And this instant message is coming from Dion, our designer. Dion is reaching out and saying, I've been working on a flyer for an upcoming campaign. Want to make sure it works. Do you have a minute for some feedback? This is a great example of how you can uh, build your interactions and fit the format that is most effective for that interaction. This feels like an instant message, a chat that I would send a colleague. Hey, I'm working on something. Do you have a second to check it out? Uh, and Luke is going to build out some responses here where you can reply, sure, Dion, I can check out the flyer you're working on. Or... I'm kind of busy right now, maybe later. Now, this is gonna uh, prompt a different interaction based on what you choose. So how do we set that up, Luke? Yeah, so you'll see we have this add trigger button in the right-hand panel here. So we have sure selected. So we're committing to actually giving the feedback to Dion. So we're gonna go ahead and trigger a new instant message. We're going to say, this is coming from Dion again. And Dion's gonna say, awesome, I'll send it over in a moment. Great. So if the user chooses that first response, sure, that's how Dion's going to respond. If the user chooses kind of busy, Dion's also going to respond uh, just a little bit differently and maybe with some slightly different timing. Yeah, so we'll say, awesome, I'll send it over in a bit. Yeah, take your time, I'll send it over in a bit. Now, either way, depending on what the user chooses, Dion's going to send them an email with this flyer concept. It's just going to add a illusion of choice here and a little bit of a different interaction. Once again, building authenticity and world building to this moment. So here's the email that's going to come from Dion where he passes the flyer that he was working on. Uh, and you still have it as Caleb at this moment. Let's make sure we have it coming from the right character. And Luke, we're gonna add an attachment here, right? Yeah, so we're, we're pointing to an email attachment, which is something I know why and I do pretty much every day. Um, so we're going to go ahead here with the add attachment button. We'll choose a file that we want to attach and we have our little flyer concept ready here. We'll call it flyer. And you have the options to upload images, documents, videos, whatever makes sense in the given situation. In this case, it is an image. Uh, it's a PDF technically, but we'll say it's an image. So we'll attach that. Awesome. It could be there for our users when they read this email. Yeah. So this interaction lends itself to a little bit different of a response type, especially if we're measuring communication. Uh, rather than a multiple choice, let's try an open response type here, Luke. Yeah. So I think context is really important here. So we're asking for feedback. Uh, and regardless of what skill you're assessing, in this case, we're saying communication. Um, we can look at this open text response, the user typing in their actual response to this email. 
we can see how constructive that feedback is. We can look at it from a professionalism standpoint. We can look at it from a grammatical standpoint. So there's a lot of different avenues you can use this, but in the case of feedback, open text responses make a ton of sense. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to show you that. The, the clock is ticking in my head here, Luke. Let's hurry up and, and finish out this last email that we wanna build. This one's coming from our final character, Camille Wells, VP of Customer Support. Camille is reaching out uh, about the topic of team burnout. So Camille has seen some troubling indicators from the team and she's worried it's gonna lead to maybe turnover or other inopportune outcomes. And in this case, Camille is adding a link in the middle of the email there about an article she read uh, on the topic of team burnout and asking you to respond. So Luke, how do we add that article to this email? Again, it would be similar to like an Outlook or Gmail client as an example. So we would just highlight the text here. And we have the option to add a link directly. In. So I'll paste in my lovely Mayo Clinic article here. We know that's a credible source too within the context of an inbox. And we'll have that set to open in a new window because we don't necessarily want to take our users away from the inbox simulation. We'll, we'll have it open in a new tab and act again as a supplemental resource. Yeah. Uh, so one other thing to, to add here, I don't want the user to be inundated right off the bat with all these uh, examples. So why don't we add a delay to Camille's uh, email here and make sure that it trickles in as we go through the experience. Yeah, let's let's have it come in at about the 10 second mark. I think that's important. wonderful. So we have some interesting interactions here. If we go up to the top right, let's preview the experience and check out what our end user would see with what we built here. So here's the preview experience. You got your message from Caleb. Oh, yeah, got... I, I'm kind of overwhelmed by this Dion message coming in immediately. Why I think this presents an opportunity to adjust that. Yeah, I, I didn't even get a chance to read what Caleb was saying before I got that IM. Let's uh, let's edit that and make Dion come in a little bit later, maybe after Camille, maybe around the 15 second mark. Yeah, it gives us some time to, to look at those other communications. Great. So that preview experience allows you on the fly to make edits uh, to your experience and evaluate what the changes look like for the user. So what do we have here, Luke? Yeah, so we see our Caleb email here. We'll choose our response, which, I mean, we know the point total, so that's a pretty easy choice for us. So we'll respond to Caleb. Like cheating on the test. <laughs> and we can always refer, you know, if, if you wanted long email threads, we have our sent folder here that you can always go back and review those. Uh, yeah, we let's click sure. I want to see the flyer that Dion is working on. Yeah, let's take a look at that. So Dion has sent that over. Awesome. Send it immediately too. Nice. So there's the attachment that we've created. And Luke, what do you think? What are you going to put in the open text response? I'm going to say, I'm not a designer, but I think this works, which in some cases could be an accurate response. Like well, I am a designer. I don't think it works, Luke, but I'll let you let you have that. There's no logo. There's no call to action, but we'll get into that another time. Uh, Camille's email, uh, you can see the article that we've embedded there. Awesome. There okay. it is. Luke, anything to add to our experience here? I mean, obviously, this is just a sampling of some of the kind of key features of the Inbox platform. Uh, we have a ton of supplemental materials. We can have conversations for, for days on end about this. But I think this is a pretty great example for, for the time allotted here. So Me too. So, Let's hit the, yeah, hit stop the watch stopwatch. Stopwatch. Matt, yep. how did we do? Do we get it in under 15 minutes? Did fantastic, gentlemen. 11 minutes and 58 seconds with time to spare. Four minutes to spare. Uh, thank you uh, for, for participating in that. Uh, was enjoying building that leadership and communication uh, example there. We know that that was fast. Uh, and hopefully, it gives you some of the lay of the land uh, for how the authoring tool works and uh, some of the capabilities that you can build into your versions. There are, I assure you, more appropriately paste materials in the help and support section of the tool. So we encourage you to check those out if you want to learn more.